Welcome to hole number one of this spring major. I'm starting off here on this par four. I've decided to bring a Titan ball because having that low level extra mile six, as you can see, we're just able to reach the bounce over the sand right here on the right hand side. I'm giving it max top spin, a little bit of right spin just to keep this ball guy down the middle of the fairway. So nothing fancy here to start. And I try to stay away from anything fancy in general anyway. I just want to get this one down the fairway. So make my nice, clean 10% max adjustment here. And make sure you're going to hit perfect. If you don't know what 10% max looks like, I want you to head to my YouTube channel. Check out the tutorial section in the playlists. And you're going to find a video all about the wind ring system. Should help you out quite a bit, especially if you're just getting started in Golf Clash. Welcome to the most incredible community on the internet. Second shot then, we're gonna have a short iron here. You can play it in front of the bunker. You can also play it just up on this little ridge that I found a little bit more consistency with. Maximum backspin, I do give it a little bit of left spin just to get that ball guide to, to line up nicely with the hole. I actually could have played this one with just like ever so slightly less backspin. It's a bit of a finicky play here. I don't know if this is gonna be the final iteration of success, but I tell you what, it gives you a very respectable chance to get it in here for an eagle. But I can tell you guys, this course, this course, it's very well made. There's certainly some opportunities for su success and you're gonna see some nice drops in this video, but it's also very challenging, which I think is gonna be fun. It's gonna make for a good time. But as you can see, we're getting there, baby. We'll see you on number two. Hole number two, part three. In this one, you see me playing with this Titan ball, but you really only need to bring a navigator here. I was practicing and I just forgot to change balls. But with this spin set, four back, one right, we don't need any more spin or any more power for this kind of shot. And you really want to find this funnel. You see, as I move the, the landing position here, back and forth, left and right, that funnel stays in the hole. And I think this is really going to be the prevailing way to play this one here. So 10% max is the adjustment that I play. Now, if we're playing this into a headwind, I think it's going to be closer to 25% max. I didn't have quite as much success in that nasty kind of wind. But again, most of the competition won't either. Now, great ball, just a minor great, which I don't think with that funnel is going to make a massive massive difference once you get the sweet spot here trickling down off the fringe rolling here long dramatic green makes for a beautiful outcome we'll see you on hole number three hole number three and we have our first par five now i'm playing this here with a quarterback and a kingmaker because i needed that little bit of extra reach and the extra side spin to the left this might play well with a katana if you have like an apoc four or something like that which is going to give you the curl you need for this shot as well as the reach to make it onto that little lily, little lily pad there in the middle of the water. But this is enough room to get the shot where we need it. I've got three top, three left, and about 1.5 ball of left curl. You'll see here as we apply that curl here, all the way over outside the adjustment circle. And as you can see here, we're gonna try to hit perfect, bada bing. And this one should come in quite, quite nicely. Well, spoiler, it does. It, it makes for a decent drive here. We do miss rough there just a little smidge but you know tiny bit less curl you know how it is in the tournament you got to adjust to that wind that we're going to see second shot here we do have a nice look at a rough bump coming in with a long iron now you might want to play goliath here um, i had the backbone in my bag and it doesn't need a massive amount of spin 2.5 top one right is what i settle in on here well two top one right but in my note i decide that i probably should have played yeah there we go two and a half top 2.6, 2.4, you know. Um, but I played the shot at 10% medium distance. And you're going to see we're going to miss just to the left of the pin. I really do think that 15% medium distance here would have been the difference maker between a drop or not. You can see the landing position here is sloped a little bit from right to left, which means we do need to counteract that effect a little bit. And I intend to do so when it counts in the big tournament. But I'm pretty happy with this outcome here overall. Makes for a nice setup. Gives us a lot to work with. We'll see you on number four. Hole number four, we have our second par three. Now, this one actually looks like it's going to give us quite a lot of options to work with. I feel like this big, long, rough bump is definitely something to look at, but I don't really like it over here on the left. You're going to see I'm going to move it over here, and it seems to come in quite nicely here. Now, I've got about anywhere from two to three bars of topspin, two and a half to three bars of topspin, and... 
you might need to use some side spin here depending on the setup. But this one here, I started to feel really comfortable with the way this one played. Now, I am playing this at 20% medium distance in the video example, and you're gonna see I'm gonna miss a considerable amount to the left. So I think that the, the outcome here, the play for us is gonna be anywhere between 10% and 0%, depending on the wind. However, you see the nice bump, the nice roll, and yeah, it's gonna put us right in the neighborhood we wanna be. All right, so hole number five. This one is a bit of a conundrum from the front tee. I found a decent line coming in on the left-hand side here, actually. And I play this shot four and a half top or, you know, max top with this level of driver. And I have that second bounce just before the rough. Now, I am playing it into a bit of a harsher headwind here. So the top spin will change depending on on what we have to work with, right? So I gave it a little bit of an extra adjustment there, but I think 10% is gonna be your all around number here. And we don't wanna to go too, too far on the drive. and We don't wanna to go too, too short either because we are looking to line up on the fairway that gives us a decent little gap in the trees. So you see clean bump, clean bounce, and you're gonna think, man, oh man, we got a lot of trees in front of us. However, you, there's a little bit of daylight that we can really work through. So just to the left, we've got a clean line for our sniper. Now, you could certainly bring something like a Horizon or a Big Dog, more topspin or more power. The Big Dog would probably let you play it directly to the green. You could play a power five ball here and play it again with closer to the green. But I opted to stick with the cheaper balls for this video to help the greatest number of people. Okay, so max top, max OP. And I just bring this one up as far as I possibly can. And it's just about on the green in two. Not quite, but gives us a very, very makeable third shot. Now, the third shot, again, with the end bringer. I'm just using Jared A's end bringer school method here. And checking to see where I'm at. Now, I know after playing this hole way too many times that this is going to be a fine setup. That green, you can see that slope left to right. Take that into account when you're setting things up. But this hole is going to give people fits. I know it. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. We get that eagle. We'll move on. Okay, so hole number six, par four here. And you can play the drive with pretty much any driver. But I like this quarterback because of the accuracy and the control that it gives us. I've got one top, two bars of right spin here. And I adjust this shot at 10% max. Now, you're going to see that we do need to give this just a little bit of curl. Nothing crazy. I am adjusting into overpower, but it doesn't mean we need to overly overpower the shot. A good ball of curl. There we go. One ball nicely lined up. Bada bing. Get that perfect. There we go. Ish kind of sort of thing. But, you know, that's the thing about using a quarterback or a rock here. You get a nice consistency with that outcome, even with a slight great ball. Second shot then. Um, I'm going to recommend we play this at negative 20% max. Looking at a rough bump here. As you can see, it's a long distance. So even with the power three ball, we're stretching. We're reaching. I've got the horizon. I put Sniper because that's what so many people play, but I do think this is gonna be a great, great opportunity for your Horizon Club here. Four and a half top, half left, and it's just gonna be a matter of dialing it in when it counts. I played negative 30, and that's gonna be just a little bit off, but you're gonna see here how nicely this ball comes in, and I really think that this is gonna be a very, very difficult course, guys. This is just a par four, and we're looking at a long distance, max rough bump, and I, I mean, it's still going to be fun. It's going to be great. I think scores are definitely going to be low, but you know what? We're going to have fun. I look forward to seeing you in the course. Hole number seven, part three. I think this is going to be the easiest one, guys. It's going to give us a good opportunity for a hole in one. Three and a half back to right. I play this shot at 20% maximum distance. As you can see, just have a little peek here. There we go. Quasar ball. I don't know what I said, but we're playing Quasar as recommended. We're at max here. Check out the the way this ball guide is rolling in here. So 3.3, power one balls. Make sure you got it all set perfectly. And really, this is a very straightforward shot. It's kind of crazy to see, right? So guys, if you're getting value from this video, if you're enjoying the video and you think this is the way I should keep making them, I would love it if you would hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to Airlick Gaming. You don't want to miss out on any of my future Golf Clash content. I'll be streaming live, making notes, and I publish those notes for free on airlickgaming.com. So check it out. Come on by. We'll get some booms, baby. That's what it's all about. All right, so hole number eight. We've got our final par four here. I've got an extra mile six and my katana ball. I'm going to play three top, three 
left into this really favorable wind condition, which is a bit unusual, but I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. I have that plus 11 yard mark. Red ring just cutting into the rough on the right here. We adjust 10% max. You're going to see we're going to give this a little bit of curl. So that's what about half to three quarters of a ball of left curl. I think both would, would play just fine. Get that nice little bump past the bunkers. Get it down here nicely. You don't want to go too much further, as you can tell. But with the favorable wind, it puts us in a really nice position for the second shot. So second shot then. I'm coming at it here with a long iron. I happen to have a backbone in my bag. So I play this right around max. Could have played it with more backspin closer up to full max. But I think this gives us... Oh, we're right at full max. That's what I meant to do. And uh, it shows. <laughs> so 3.5 to 4 bars of backspin here. And you can see I bumped it up to 20% adjustment there, thinking I'm like, ah, I need it just a little bit more. I was playing it at 10%. I kept missing to the right. So I give it this 20% max adjustment. I really think we should have played it at 15. I think that's going to be the sweet spot. It's going to be the one we're looking for. This hole can be very difficult depending on the wind. But I think, as you can see, we're going to have a great opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. We'll see you on number nine. All right, so hole number nine, you see me starting off here pretty crazy. I'm looking around, trying to get to this little island, and it's nice to see how it's going to play here. So I try to power three, not going to cut it. You could probably bring your P5 ball, but I thought, ah, you know, I'm trying to stay away from the Zerks unless it's really going to give us a clear cut advantage. But we check it out anyway. We're going to see the distance, and yeah, I could play there, but then I realized, man, I do not have enough curl, even with a quarterback, which now won't reach. So I'm like, okay. Let's lay up on the right-hand side. We don't need to waste a Zerk for that, right? So we'll bump it down to a Navigator Ball. And I just, I'm looking at this right side brute here. So three top, one left. And that's going to put us actually in a very nice position here for the second shot. So you get a lot of reconnaissance information here with this example, which is why I chose to show this one. Um, you know, I've played it a little more cleanly, but this really gives you an idea of why I've come up with this kind of outcome. So second shot, I've got a sniper indicated here because you're going to see I don't actually, eh, maybe in tailwind, this would be a good little bump, puts us in a nice position. But I'm taking a look at the big picture here, right side, it's going to be the play. So you can do this with a horizon, a sniper, any kind of club. It's really nothing too special about this shot other than we're really just kind of laying it up, putting it in position, five top, one left. And you're going to see it's going to put us in a nice position. Once again, I like showing these head headwind examples because they're they're difficult. You know, we, we can play tailwind and gentle crosswinds, I think, a lot more easily than the headwind, especially in rookie, right? So it's important that we get these looks and we learn how we can play it. So whether it's a sniper or a horizon, whatever you're going to do, you're just going to bump it up here. Keep it close to the left-hand side so your distance from the pin is not too far. It'll set us up for a third shot. Now, third shot here. This green is trash, okay? I mean that respectfully, but it's all over the place. It's bumpy and rolly. I just had a moment of inspiration here. I summoned my hero, Mr. GC Tommy, and I was like, you know what? This seems to be a really good play for a dunk. When do I ever play a dunk, right? So I played the dunk. I thought, let's give it a rip, and we line it up. 10% mid here is what I played. And the astute-eyed view might notice that I did have the power to settings still in the app. So take that for what it is. It's an extra point one. And you know what, guys? I hope you have a great spring major. Get those booms, baby. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you out there. Good luck.